يهيرا وصن من لفنا خو أدونا يرو هاي شلو أكو شل بفور هلا خو شلو أمر قمي طهور وعلى الطهور قمي وعلى منتور الصور وعلى صور نطور وعلى كشل بفور هلا خو ويسمع حبي حبراي وعلي كشلو حبراي بفور هلا خو وأسمع مهم So this week's parasha is parasha ta'akkiv is Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 12 through Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 25. Whoever would like to begin with the first verse can repeat after me. Vehaya. 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 Ekev. 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 Tish me un. 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 All right, so this, no R sound, just ooh, ooh, un. Tish me un. You got it. All right. Et. Et. Ha, mish, ha, team. Ha, mish, ha, team. Good. Ha, elle. Ha, elle. Ha. Ush mar tem. Ush mar tem. Ush mar. Good, good. Va a si tem. Va a si tem. Va a si tem. Oh, Tom. Oh, Tom. Ve sho mar. Veshomar. Veshomar. Adonai. Adonai. Elohecha. 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 That's it. Let's do it again. Elohecha. Elohecha. Perfect. Lecha. Lecha. Et. Et. Haberit. Haberit. Ve et. Ve et. Ha chesed. Ha chesed. Beautiful. Asher. Asher. Nishba. Nishba. La. La avotecha. La avotecha. La avotecha. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Would you like to read up to this point? Read up to Ha'ele. I'll help you. But some confusion. Sure. What's the question? I just try, but I can't. So I'll help you. Okay. Just tell me the name of this letter. Wall. Great, great. And wall is the correct pronunciation of the name of this letter in, in proper Hebrew. In modern Hebrew, in the popular pronunciation, it's V, like the word very like it's very good so most people they'll pronounce this vav but what you said is actually more correct wall and we we should try to learn both if possible so okay you can pronounce this as what or v all right and what letter is this hey beautiful what sound does he make huh. perfect and the vowel Underneath the letter he, this vowel, it makes an ah uh sound. So we would have ve, ha. Ve, ha. Ve, ha. What letter is this? 
Yod. Great. And it makes a what kind of sound? Yod. Yeah. Good. All right. So this is a Y, like an English Y. Underneath, you have the Kamats vowel. Kamats makes an A uh sound. So Yud, which is a Y, Y plus A uh is Ya. So we have V, Ha, Ya. And this hey at the end has no vowel, so it's silent. Vehaya. Vehaya. All right. Now, what letter is this? Ein. Beautiful. All right. And the vowel underneath it is just two dots, one next sere. to the other. Good. Sere. What sound does sere make? E. All right. So this is e. e. Yeah. E. Just e. Okay, what letter is this? Kuf. Nachon, that's correct. And the vowel underneath it, what's the name of that vowel? Segur. Nachon, what sound does segur make? Se, uh, eh. Eh, eh, yeah, good. Okay, so kuf is like a Q or a K. So K plus E eh is just K. So we have E, eh, K, E, eh, K. And then this letter, what is that letter? Red. Good. And it makes a V like in the word very or violin. So, kuf plus segol is ke. Ke plus v is kev. E kev. E kev. Good. So now, how about you read these two words? Ve haya e kev. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, let's do the yeah. next one. Tell me the name. Tell Tau. me the name of the letter. Good. And now, what is the name of the of the vowel underneath that tav? It's uh, I think. The uh, chirik, All right, and what sound does chirik make? Good. So the sound of the letter Tav is T. T plus E is T. T. All right. Now I have a, what letter is this? Shin. Good. And the Shin is over what? What is the name of these two dots, one on top of each other? Yeah, uh, it remains silent. Good. Sometimes it's sounded, but Vocal. most of the time it's silent. Yeah. All right. And if you're not sure whether it should be sounded or silent, just assume that it's silent. And in this case, it is silent. All right. So T plus E plus SH makes what? Tish. Beautiful. Tish. Now, we're going to learn a few cases, a few situations where the Shiva is not silent. <clears throat> and when it's not silent, it just makes a short E eh sound. Okay. One, yeah. one way you can know that it's not silent is if you have two shvas in a row. Here we have two. One, two. When you have two shvas in a row, the second shva will be sounded. Okay. <clears throat> so that means the second shva is like a short e eh sound. So we're not going to read it tishm, tishm. That would be wrong. We're going to read it tishmit, tishmit. This is a, this shava is like a short eh sound. Tishmet. We have another one down here. <clears throat> another time you know that the shava is sounded, not silent, is if the letter above the shava has a dagesh, a dot inside of it. <clears throat> so if there's a dot in the letter above the shava, then the shava is sounded. It'll be a short eh. The same way that it is when it's the second of two shavas in a row. Yeah. So instead of habrit, instead of habrit, it's habberit, habberit. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's read yeah. this. Let's read this word again. Go ahead. Tish me. Tish me on. Beautiful. Tish me on. Tish me on. Okay, next word. 
Go ahead. If you're not That's sure how it's okay, you got it. Now we have a big one. If you get a big word and it's intimidating, just break it into pieces. Say the name of the letter, um, the vowel. Oh, you got it. You got it. Good. Let's say it one more time for the video. Ha uh, mishpatim. Beautiful. Okay. Next word. Ha ele. Beautiful. Beautiful. <clears throat> now, we have three syllables in this word. Ha, that's one. E, that's two. Le, that's three. One of these one of these syllables needs to be accented. That means one of these syllables, one of the parts of the word, needs to stand out, be more noticeable than other parts of the word. How do we know which parts stand out more than the others? The cantillation marks will tell us. So because there are three syllables and only one cantillation mark, that cantillation mark is telling us this syllable, this part of the word, is the part of the word that needs to stand out the most. That means we're going to emphasize this vowel sound of this part of the word, which will be ha -el, ha -el, ha -el. Instead of ha -el, it's ha -el. And we know that because the, the cantillation symbol, the musical note, it's telling us that. Okay. All right. So go ahead and say ha el. Ha el. All right. Next word. Ushamaratim. Okay. Let's read it one more time. My alarm just went off for our Torah class and it just went off like an hour and a half late. <laughs> Ushamaratim. Okay. So, is this Shiva? Should we treat it as silent or sounded? Is it, is, uh, should, should it be Ushe Martem or Ush Martem? Ushe ush or Ush? ush. Good, good. Ush Martem. And we can just assume that unless we see the signs, the indicators that it should be sounded, we should just assume a sign. Ushmartem. All right. Uh, let's do two more because we're doing great. Go ahead. What? Yeah. What is it? Is them or is it them? Okay, let's break it into parts. So this one you're doing correctly and in proper ancient Hebrew. Wa. All right. Now this is a separate vowel, so we need to hear these two parts of the words. We need to hear them clearly separate. So we don't want to join them like they're just one vowel. We don't want to say wa si. We just want we want to say wa a wa a because they're separate. Wa a si. We we know this is a sa like the word snack or snake, and not sha because the dot on the top it's on the left hand side, right? So if the dot is on the right side, it's a sha. If it's on the left side, it's a sa. So wa a si. Wa -a -si. Wa -a -si. Okay. All right, now I, the, good, good. Now, the first time you read it, it sounded like you weren't sure if you should pronounce this like a ya, like yet, yet them or something. The way you know if a yud should be pronounced like a y is, is if and only if there's a vowel above or below the yud. But there's no vowel above or below this yud, so we know that this yud is just a continuation of the vowel under the scene. So this yud does not make a Y sound. It's just acting as a representative of this vowel under the scene. Va a si tem. Va a si tem. All right, last word. 
Bottom. All right. Do you have a pencil and paper or a pen and paper? Yeah. You do? Oh, great. Okay, so now let's focus on some of the more common words here. Okay? We're not going to look at every single word, just the common ones. All right, this is a big word. It might look intimidating, but do you see any part of this word that looks familiar? Sometimes we'll see a big word and think, oh, I have no idea what that means. But if you look carefully, a lot of times you'll see in the middle of the word something that you know. Shemaim. All right, what does that mean? What does Shema mean? Uh, are heaven or? Oh, that's Shemaim. Yeah, Shemaim means heaven. But this is just Shema. Shema. Shema, to, to listen? Yes. Or to call? Yes, to listen. Listen or to hear. All right, so Shema is to listen. This T sound added at the beginning means you will. So you will listen. You will listen. All right. This is a very common word. Mishpat. If we drop the additions to the word, the basic word is just mishpat. And you can write this down uh, if you want. What you say? Yeah, beautiful. Judgment. Excellent. Judgment is from the root word shafet, which means to judge or a judge. Okay. Uh, elle. Elle. Uh, elle. I think the God. That's a very good guess. And anybody who's who knows about Muslims, for example, can see why, because it almost looks like Allah. Elle. Elle. But this word just means these. These. T H E S E. These. So you want to write that down on your piece of paper. Elle is these. Okay. Next word. We have a lot of common words in this verse. So this is a big word, but if we look carefully, we'll see that the root of it, it's a very common word. Shemal. All right, what does that mean? Uh, I'll give you multiple choice. Does it mean to throw away, to keep, or to create? To create. Okay. So sh shamar means to keep or to okay. preserve. We should write this one down because it's very, very common. So shamar. It means, it can mean a few things. It can mean to keep, to preserve, to preserve, or to guard or protect. There's a song. The guardian of Israel, the protector of Israel. Yeah. So if we say we keep Shabbat, we say we Shomer Shabbat, Shomer Shabbat. If we keep Torah, we say Shomer Torah, Shomer Torah. All right, so I would circle this word. It's, it's very, very common. Okay, let's see. This right here, Cha. We see this in almost every verse. Here's Cha. Ha, it's often at the end of a word. Ha, ha. Can you tell me what this means? It can mean two things. Ha, ha, everywhere. What does that ha mean? 
Um, only in the meaning of ha. Okay. So this one also I would circle. Ha means you or yours. You or yours. Yeah. Ka mean you or yours only. Good. The kaf, the letter kaf at the end of a word means you or yours. If it's added to a noun, it means your, Y-O-U-R. So like if bite means house and I add kha at the end, bet kha, that means your house. And if we add it to a verb, like an action word, like love. Right? If we add kha to a action, a verb, not a noun, then it means you. It means the action is done to you. So ahev means love, kha, you. It's like saying, I love you. Overacha and I blessed you. All right? Okay, let's continue. So let's go to Seferamit Vot. Okay, would you like to read for us? Sefer HaMitzvot, it's a collection of the 613 commandments that are in the Torah. So basically, it goes through all of the 613 commandments in the Torah and just gives a short summary of what each one is. Shall I read? Yes, please, please. The second Mitzvah is that we are commanded to acquire knowledge of the that the original creator and so source of existence is one. You can continue. Okay. The source of this commandment is God's state statement. Exalted be he. Exalted be he. Here God is our Lord. God is one. In most Midrashim, you will find the Mizwah described in the context of God's statement that a certain kindness was done was done to be Jewish people. One condition that they unify my name, one condition on the on condition that they un, unite me or a similar expression. They they means to say that God took us out of the bondage and heaped uh, kindness upon us, upon upon us, upon condition that we have we have His unity flame flame fixed in our mind firmly firmly fixed in our mind since we are required to do so. From this, we see that knowledge of His unity in his actual requirement and it's and is therefore counted as one of the 613 commandments okay so when it says that we are to unify his name or that we are to unite me that sounds kind of weird in english all that means is that we proclaim we declare that god is one and that we live as if he's one it doesn't mean that God is not one, but we have to put him together into, you know, like God's many parts, but we have to put him together like a puzzle. Uh, so that's not what it means. What it means is we put together our actions to be in alignment with and harmony with the one God. And our words should proclaim that God is one. All right, let's continue. Almost finished. In many places, the expression is used 
the misva of his un un unity the word misva misva also indicating that this counts as one of the 613 commandments our sages also called the misva kingdom saying that the paragraph shema is read before we haya in order to accept upon oneself the yoke of the kingdom of heaven that is the acknowledge and comprehend his unity all right so it's called kingdom because it's like god is king over all existence and king of our lives all right so let's go to kriyat shema so we stopped last time we finished with halakha 9 We'll just do maybe two halachot since there's not many people here. Okay, halachatin. This is chapter two, halachatin. Shall I read? Yes, please. Bechavod. A person may recite the Shema in any language he understands. One who recites in a foreign language must be as Scrupulous, scrupulous. In the enunciation, 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 as if he were reciting in it, it in the holy language, in the holy tongue. Ah, uh, let let's look at this halacha again because they used English words that are not super common. Okay, so it's saying a person can fulfill their obligation to recite the Shema. In any language that he understands, right? So, if somebody doesn't understand Hebrew, you are allowed to fulfill the obligation of reciting Shema in Telugu, if that's the language that you understand, or in Tamil, or in Hindi, right? Any language, if you understand it, you can fulfill the obligation in your native language. A person who recites, a person who reads out loud the Shema in a foreign language. Some language other than Hebrew. We should not think that just because it's not Hebrew, we don't need to be scrupulous in the reading. Scrupulous just means careful, very careful. It's the Hebrew word lehizaher. So they already gave us the law, the halacha, which we saw last week, that when we read when we read Shema in Hebrew, we should be very careful with pronunciation. And this halacha is telling us that's not only true for reading it in Hebrew; it's also true if you're reading it in English or in Telugu or any other language. So we need to be careful in reading Shema to clearly pronounce the words in whatever language we're reading. Enunciate is just a fancy way of saying、uh, clearly pronounce, carefully pronounce. So we should read it as if. We're reading it in the holy tongue, Hebrew. Okay, halacha aharasre, halacha eleven. One who reads the Shema out of order does not fulfill his obligation. This refers to the order of the verses. However, were the verse reverse the order of the section even through it is not permitted. It I hold that、uh, the, he does fulfill his obligation since the section are not sequential, sequential in the Torah. To right, recite so, a verse. Go ahead. I'm sorry. To recite a verse and then repeat it again in is improper. One who reads a word, it's, it's much. Such as one who okay. So basically, the Shema consists mainly of three major sections of the Torah. It, it it's three sections. Each one's about a paragraph long. It's saying if you read the verses out of order, not in the proper order. We don't fulfill the obligation, but that's only referring to the verses of one of those sections, right, or of any of them, but like all mixed up. But if you if you read the sections, there are three of them. If you read those different sections in a different order, 
but you're not mixing up the verses of each section, then the Rambam, who put together this code of Jewish law, he held that you do fulfill your obligation if you read the three sections out of order, as long as you're not mixing up the order of the verses in each section. So he says that's his opinion. And he states it's his opinion because it's not clear from the Talmud what the answer would be in that situation. So that's that's something that we are really not supposed to do, but if maybe you did it on accident, don't worry about it. To recite a verse and then repeat it again is improper, right? And part of the reason for this is because uh, in, in, ancient, in the ancient Middle East, the Jewish people were the only monotheistic people. We were the only people who believed in one God. It wasn't like today that you also have Muslims who believe in one God. So sometimes there were small groups of Jews who would adopt non-Jewish ideas of multiple gods. So sometimes they would mix the idolatry, the paganism. They'd mix it with the, with the Torah faith. So sometimes they would recite a word more than once to hint at there being more than one God. So that's why it's that's why they were strict with this kind of. And of course, in in certain parts of the world today, there's still people who worship more than one God. So it's still a relevant halakha for sure. Okay, uh, we'll leave it at that for today. Let's go on to Hilchot <clears throat> Deot. So we stopped at the third halakha in Hilchot Deot. You can read this if you'd like. The two extremes of each trait, trait, which are at a distance from one another, do not reflect a proper path. Is It is not fitting that a man should behave in accordance with these extremes or teach them to himself. If he finds that his nature leans towards one of the extremes and ad ad adapts itself easily it to it or if he has learned one of the extreme and acts accordingly he should bring himself back to what he, what is proper and walk in the path of the good man this is the straight, straight path all right uh let's leave it at this for today because we're only a few people in this class um, but if you have any questions, do you have any questions about anything that we could discuss? Anything at all? Okay, if you don't have any questions, then we will say this blessing and then we'll call it a day. <laughs> Shastamto Halkimi Yoshebe Bethamid Rosh, Wella Samto Halki Miyoshebe Kronath, Shani Mashkim, Wahem Mashkimim, Ani Mashkim Lady Bretoro, Wahem Mashkimim, Lidvorim Bakalim, Ani Amel Wahem Amelim, Ani Amel Mkabel Sohor Wahem Amelim, Wen Makabalim Sohor, Ani Ros Wahem Rosim, Ani Ros Lahaye Hoelam Habo, Wahem Rosim Liv Er Shahath. We're grateful before you, Adonai, our God, that you have placed our portion among those who dwell in your houses of study, and you have not apportioned us among those who sit idly on street corners. For we arise and they arise. We get up early to your words of Torah, and they arise early to empty things. We work hard and they work hard. We work hard and we receive reward, and they work hard, but they don't receive the reward. We run and they run. We run to everlasting life and they're running to a pit of destruction. But God, may you fill us with a love to share your love with other people, to draw them near to your Torah, that they too may be inheritors of life everlasting. Can you hear us? You have a great evening and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.